Well, first thing I want to do is show you a little handout I have that some of y'all may have seen already. But I, if you want it, I'll send it to you. But it's just more like notes for me to remember to, that there's no real definitions and stuff. It's just, it's kind of things you need to consider with every kind of camera. Okay. So let me just show you that and we'll just. Okay, so everybody see this uh, Word doc here? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so let's, um, let me get into a few of these things then we'll get the cameras out. Everybody has their camera, right? Well, at least one, one out of two of you do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna run down everything and then we'll go over it with the camera. I think that's the best way to start here. Frame rate, resolution and encoding, okay? Frame rate means how many frames per second am I shooting, okay? That is not shutter speed. That is not this shutter speed, not the same, okay? They are related and we'll talk about that, but they're not the same thing. Uh, movies are shot for the most part in 24 frames a second. Broadcast is 30 frames a second for technical reasons that go way back. Frankly, probably aren't needed anymore. Uh, there is something called uh, interlaced and progressive kind of going away also was around uh, for broadcast. Um, I'd say in your cases, when in doubt, I would shoot progressive. That's a type of scan, the way it goes, the way it lays down the pixels. Interlaced, an old fashioned one, it does sort of every other row. And there's not gonna be a quiz on this. <laughs> just so you know, I'm just kind of giving you some quick education here on the real science of it. But, uh, uh, progressive, it just kind of starts up here to the left and goes and just scans all the way across, one dot at a time, one, one pixel at a time. And that's preferable for quality, but either one are going to be okay. Uh, you, you get really technical, you really want progressive, but um, resolution, that's basically how many pixels am I shooting? And it, it is uh, a, an expression of, of height by width. So, 1920 by 1080, you'll see that's standard high definition. Then there's several sort of flavors of, of what they call 4K, where it's 2000 something. And you don't have to know too much about it. You just have to understand that there are different resolutions. I sent some of you all some video to practice editing. Well, I made that really low resolution so it would go over the internet quicker. Because if there's one, the, the better, the more resolution, the better the picture, but the more information there is. Um, we're going to shoot almost every, we're shooting everything on, on 1080, but you, you want to understand that because as you'll see, when you go to edit, you can put things with different resolutions on the same time code or the same timeline, but you only have, the timeline has one resolution itself. You have to do things to things that aren't that resolution to, to make them different. So in a way it doesn't really matter, but if I was to blow up something that was low res, it'll pixelize. There are some ways in which it matters. Um, you might work with old stuff that was uh, standard definition, like I shot for many years. It's a whole different aspect ratio and looks kind of square. You just have to be aware that this is mostly to do with resolution. That's what I want you guys to be aware of. Encoding, that's a little different. That, that's, um, <clears throat> the com every camera nowadays is a computer. And some, well, they all, have, they, they all have some sort of compression where they're taking the data and they're making it a little smaller by encoding it. And then when you edit it, you're going to decode it and kind of blow it up again. Like a friend of mine refers to it as hydrating, like dehydrated food. It's kind of like that um, in a digital way. The compression uh, can be high in some cameras. It can be low, it can be adjusted on some cameras. The ones you have, you, I think you can adjust. And you've heard, the, you might've heard the word raw. That means no compression, which is preferable, but then it's huge file sizes. So you've got to be able to accommodate that with your cards, your drives, your computers, all of it. Uh, so most people don't really bother with that, except at the very high end, they do, they do. It's also easier to manipulate things after you shoot in post. So that's what encoding is. Uh, most of these cameras encode, I believe they encode into H264 uh, in a quick time format. So that's not on the sheet here, but the difference between the format and, and the encoding or the, uh, what the hell can we call it? Uh, the codec, you know, there are two things there too, just like frame rate resolution. There's a codec and that's, that has to do with the encoding. 
Uh, and that's usually, that's often something like H264. And this works in the background for the most part, but sometimes when you run into problems, you need to know about this stuff. Uh, H264, and then there's basically nowadays, there's only two formats. You'll see other ones, but they're very, getting more and more rare. There's QuickTime, which is, if you see a file, it's .mov at the end of that file. And, and then there's MPEG, which I believe is .mpg. I have an MPEG over here. Uh, I'll show you guys when we get down to how to frame up an interview. And I don't even remember, yeah, I don't even remember. Uh, well, I don't have it here. But .mpg, I think it is. Those are MPEG. And there's different flavors of MPEG. I believe we're mostly using MPEG-4 nowadays. So those are just things you're going to hear thrown around. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the camera out, and then we're going to talk about exposure triangle. Uh, every shot you do, you're going to have, with these cameras, you got to take control of the camera now, and you're definitely going to need to set the exposure. You're going to need to deal with exposure and focus on every shot. The camera's no longer going to do stuff for you. It might do stuff for you, but it won't be right unless you talk to it. Uh, we're going to look at the tripod. We're Probably not going to talk too much about monitors. We're going to talk about live view. We're definitely going to talk about focus. I'll show you how to record. Um, we're going to talk about picture style and color grading. That has to do with uh, uh, post-production. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about crop factor. So if you run across that, you understand that, what that means. It's a little confusing. Uh, we are definitely going to talk about audio. I'm a nut about audio. Any of the guys that you've got ahead of me, you know I am. It's got, you got to have good audio. This is half audio, half video. They both got to be quality if you want to get hired. Uh, so um, I think one of you has a camera that we're going to run the microphone straight in, and the other two have an audio recorder. So I think I'm correct on that, yeah. So we're going to show the audio recorder, and I want the ones of you that don't have that to pay attention anyway and vice versa. The other one is simply, you know, an adapter and plug it in. But the audio recorder is a little bit more complicated. It's, we're gonna, it's using a whole separate machine, making a whole separate recording that we're going to meld together when we edit. It's not that hard. You just got to remember to record both things. Um, we do, we'll just, I'll let you know the other kind of mics that might be available that we have and some of the other support gear that we have. All right. Yes. Okay. So, y'all can see me okay, right? Because we're going to start showing you some physical things here. We're going to start with the tripod. By the way, everybody knows these are not cameras, right? Who can tell me what they are? Come on, guys. I can't somebody, tell what we're looking at. somebody remembers? DSLRs. Nope. Are these DSLRs? It's literally not a camera, not in my mind. It's not nothing technical. It's, it's something I say. Take like, care of. To take, in order to take care of them. Oh, uh, take care. It's like a baby. It's <laughs> a baby, right, Kim? Yeah. It's, it's not a, a camera. It's a baby. Yeah. This one, boy, this is my baby here. I love this camera. I started out as a still photographer, and I went 30 years before I could get a camera like this that would do video. So this, this blows me away. I'd love having different lenses and it doesn't weigh 30 pounds. You know? Eric, do you, do you want them to all like kind of stand up with their camera so you, so you can see them? Yeah, doing? we're just gonna have to kind of work on that as we go. I think the best way is if you have a problem, you know, you got a fair way to show me here. I'm trying you to figure out how to show to really, you my- this is, your, this is your training time. So what the next thing after you do an exercise, I, I can't emphasize enough you're going to be going out and shooting this video without Eric, without me. We're going to be a text and phone call away, but you guys are going to be on your own. So it's the best thing to do right now. That's why I said, please have the camera set up so you can go along with him. You well, can touch the buttons. Him. You can push everything he's talking about. And yeah. so you- I'm going to show him how to set it on the camera, on the tripod. So don't get, don't right. get, don't get ahead of you. That's all right. If you have your tripod, go ahead and set that up. If you don't know how, just shout out here. Can y'all see me? I've got it up just one stage. You can do that if you're sitting down, which I'm gonna do, but you know, to let out another stage, you just let out these bottom ones, okay? I'm gonna leave it down here so I can sit down. 
If you can't see or something, help me out and tell me here because I can't switch to my phone and get my phone up close to something. But I know I've got the camera up here. That's just as handy. So can y'all see me down here? Or do I need to? I don't think you can. Let me bring it up. I'm going to bring mine up a little higher so you can see it. Yeah, you guys should all be doing this too because, I mean, even when yeah, you're not you're follow me now. people and you don't know how to put the camera on this tripod, it's a different kind of camera that you've put on a tripod before. So physically, let's get the tripod out and stick it on the tripod so you guys know that that's like the first thing you have to do. Okay, so everybody got their tripod out? I know most of y'all have done this part. I'll just review it quickly. So we want it to be stable and we want to use the tripod when we can because we don't like safe, shaky stuff. We also don't like crooked stuff. So we want to level the camera. Can you see my hand here? Yeah, right under here. Yeah, you can see it. There's a little, what we call a claw here. Uh, some of you may have one that's like a handle and others might be a T handle. Just loosen it a little bit clockwise. Don't take it all the way off, just loosen it. And if you look up under the tripod plate, you'll see a bubble and a level, okay? You want to set that level. I really miss the expensive tripods that had a little light in them. I'm going to turn on my light. So there's a... Uh, So set your bubble inside your circle and then counterclockwise tighten that up nice and snug. Okay, then you're level. When you're moving around, especially outside or on old floors and stuff, you want to check that every time you move, make sure you're level. Okay, that's not something we want to fix in post. We want to do everything we can while we're in the field. Everybody got that so far? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, you guys are using a different plate than me. I think most of you may have used these. Um, they're getting a little old. I gave them to the, you guys, the DSLR guys, because they are easier to use with the DSLR. I do not have that one. I have the newer kind, but they kind of work the same. I'm just going to loosen this little thing over here. You don't need to do that. I'll tell you in a minute how you do that. I walk mine in like that. And then I lock it over here for a second while I tell you, you're going to take yours. Everybody has one with a little red button on it, right? I see Kim's there. You're going to slide your camera. It should have the, the plate on it. You're going to slide it in from the back. That's your own camera, isn't it, Kim? You're going to slide it nice and flat and level. Slide it in, then you should hear it click. It'll still slosh around, though. That's all right. We're going to talk about that. Everybody got it on there? I know it takes a minute. Be careful with that. You don't want to drop the baby there. We're working on it. We're working on putting it on right now. Oh, yeah, okay. I see you got it. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Just hold on to it for a minute. I'll explain about that sliding around. Okay. Good. I can see you all good. That's good. You got it, Nyqua? Okay. No. Yeah, got it. Okay, so the people that have the camera, just so I know, is uh, Kim. Is that your own camera you're using? I know that's your camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which camera did I give you, Kim? Ah, uh, you gave me the um, seventy. Seventy. Okay. All right. D. I didn't think they were black like that. Okay, I just wanted to check. So you have one. Nikon has one. And who's the, oh, and Moria has one. And Moria, you got your team together, good. Who's with you, Moria? Oh, 
Athena. 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 Hi, Athena. So the only one missing is Nyquan's partner. Oh, here, Juan is joining us. Yeah. Juan Omar Torres is joining us now. Okay. So and Juan and Trevor Trevor will Trevor will be mentoring uh, Nyquan's group. Why does the camera slosh around, okay? Why does it move back and forth? Well, on a bigger camera, it's more important, but it is good on this one. That's because the tripod, all these machines are stupid. They don't know anything. They don't know what you just put up there. They don't know that it's a tiny little single lens reflex camera. It could be a big old ENG camera like I carry around with a, with a big old teleprompter on the front and a big old battery on the back. And so there's different weights front and back. So what it wants you to do is balance it so that you can do this. You can just let it sit there and it won't do this. See how it's doing that? It's falling forward. That's not good. I don't want to have my hands on the camera and force it to stay up all the time. I want it to float. So I'm, lo I've, I'm staying loose on the left on that little uh, lock button. And I'm going to loosen my friction right here. See it? I'm just going to loosen it nice and loose because if I leave it tight, I'll get a false reading, so to speak. I'm going to leave it loose. So what happens when there's no friction at all? Does it start to go backwards? Does it start to go forward? And I'm having to exaggerate because it's not that, it's not that big a deal with these DSLRs. But this is something I do every time I put a camera, any camera on any tripod. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Any video tripod. Still cameras, you can't, tripods, you can't really do this. But just when it floats, okay, then I'm going to tighten my friction up a little bit. If I, 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 can, I don't have to hammer it down, but I could. But I do have to tighten this other one so that it doesn't slide around if I was to tilt down, okay? So you want to level it and balance it every time. And I can shoot on steps, you know, with one leg down much lower than the other two or whatever I got to do to get it steady. But I know I got to make it level and I want it to be balanced so I can go easy with my handle. It's all about being gentle once it's rolling. I don't want a lot of shaking and bumping that ruins the shots, you know? And I tell, I tell people, you know, get to know your tripod. Learn your tripod if you want to be a good shooter. You know, how, because you don't want to think about the tripod. You, you don't want to think about the camera. You want to think about the shots. But you got to get certain habits, you know. So that's what I'm trying to show you today, these habits. To me, that's the advanced thing, the advanced habits. Okay? So everybody got them on there and balanced? Yeah. All right. Got it. Um, you know, I screwed up, I realize, because I didn't tell you to put a battery in there first. I don't know. Uh, did you guys put a battery in? I don't think I did. If not, we're going to have practice on, yeah, you got to take it off again to put the battery. I hate that about these. To take it off, you want to push that red button and slide it, I think it's just slide it back out. I think they just have a stiff button. You got to unlock that lock now, though. Oh. You got to unlock the lock. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we doing there? We're not using screwdrivers, tools, pens, pencils. No, 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 no. We, we tighten it too close to the camera. So okay, it's kind of hard down. to get us to like un... Okay. All right. Is the little red thing off? What? Is the little red tab off? No, it's under the camera. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, and then it's too yeah. close to the... Yeah, we just can't pull it down. Yeah, these DSLRs are not... They don't fit on here just nice. All right, can you get it? Pliers will help if you got pliers. We don't have, <laughs> we don't have pliers. Yeah, it's like right under the camera. Here's the thing, let it go. Watch, watch what I'm doing here. I think you can get at your battery port if you just take your arm off. Unscrew this arm just like this. Yeah, I think. <laughs> You're gonna to have to get it off of there though, obviously, so. Yeah. What if we tilt it to the side? Everybody else have theirs off? Yeah. 
There we go. Now push the button and slide it off the back. Okay. Everybody else have moth? So the battery is right down here. Little door. Open it. In your bag, you should see batteries with a yellow tab on them. Those batteries should be charged up. So go ahead and drop one of those in and close the door. Got a battery? Yeah, we put it in. Cool. So rebound with your camera. So again, I'm going to loosen this. Oh, no. so large, they, they got a lot of room for balance, but other cameras don't. All right. Okay. Everybody good? Everybody has a battery? All right. I haven't done this in a while. I'm trying, I used to know these by heart, what to do next. But. All right, we're going to talk about the exposure triangle. To do, but to do that, we're going to turn it on for video, OK? It's important to notice that these cameras are really made for still pictures. Video is like an afterthought. There are other ones called mirrorless that are more the other way around. They're made for video, but you could do stills. These are kind of still cameras made for video. So the, what you want to do is you want to make sure, and I'm pretty sure yours all are all like that. But you want to make sure up here on the left, on the very top, that it's set to M, OK? And this locks, which I like. Because if you push that down and you go to any of those other settings, those are pretty much for still photography. So you want to go to M for manual. We're going to do everything manual now. Everybody got it on M? They should be on M. They should be on M. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to just turn it on. Well, I'll show you one more thing in case you get, because I have seen students get confused. Just to the right of the eye cup here is start and stop. And there's a little camera and a little movie camera. Obviously, we want the movie camera. It should be on there, but some of these things get bumped. Or somebody was using it for still pictures. Make sure it's on the movie camera. That's called the live view, OK? So when I turn it on, that's up just under that last wheel I showed you. Turn it on. Now, I have a different kind of camera than you all. So you have to deploy your little um, viewfinder there in the back. You can, you can pull it out. You can roll it over and put it back in here. You can leave it out here on the left. Does everybody have it out where you can see it? Your viewfinder. Should be yeah. looking at your camera. Yep, OK. That's all right. I can only see the one, one of you guys here. I guess, hold on. Let me, let me do this. There we go. Now I can see everybody better. All right. Everybody can see an image. You can take your uh, lens cap off. If you have a lens cap, people have been losing my lens caps. That's not taking care of the baby, by the way. Everybody see an image in there? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back to this screen sharing thing for a minute and show you something. So now we're going we're gonna to talk about the exposure. Again, every shot, you know, by the way, let, let's just talk about white balance. I took this off of here, I think. Just so you're aware, there is a white balance, a color setting, and you can tell it what white is by pointing it at white and pushing a button. I want you to be aware of that. But I want you to understand what white balance is. The camera is constantly looking and deciding what white is in any setting. I don't know how it does it. It's a mystery. I had to push a button for years. But these all have what's called auto white balance, or I can go in the menu and I can tell it I'm out in the sun, I'm in the shade, or I want to push a button and, at some, and point it at something white. Um, we pretty much go with the auto white balance. The only time it's going to get fooled is if there are two kinds of light. My, my camera on well, my computer might even be a little fooled right now because I've got incandescent light here. You can see it's kind of maybe a little blue. And I've got outdoor light coming in through my windows. Those are different color temperatures. Outdoor light is really different than indoor light. So if there's two light sources, it's going to guess at one and maybe get it. It'll be a little colored 
probably could be fixed in post. So we don't worry too much about white balance because there's a lot to think about. Uh, we let that the camera do that for us. But if it does, if it looks way out of color, you know, you'll have to uh, figure out how to do a white balance. You can, most of these bags, they have the owner's manual in there. You can get them online in a hurry. They're not hard to do. You just push a little button and point it at something white. You don't even have to fill up the frame. But you won't have to do that. The auto white balance is great. What you will have to do is the exposure, okay? So I want to talk about the triangle here. To get a correct exposure here in the center, I, it's a combination of these three things. F-stop, that is, there's an iris, okay? An opening in the lens that will let a little bit of light in if I'm on the beach, a whole lot of light in if I am, and your cameras and your phones have these, by the way. If I am on 7th Avenue at midnight, a whole lot of light in, okay? And, or, you know, and, and we want to get to picking an f-stop. Our goal is, especially when shooting interviews, because of something called depth of field, which I'll get into a little later on. Uh, but if we pick any one of these things, that means we got to adjust the others. But the f-stops are measured uh, 1.8, f2, f2.8, f4. You've seen these. You, uh, you can't see them on your lenses nowadays, but they're there. And I can see what f-stop I'm shooting if you have the menu correct, and you should. Right here, f2.8. You guys see that? You're going to be probably open like that, too. You see your f-stop down in the lower left? Yeah. That's not necessarily correct. It appears to be just by looking at mine here. But that's just where it was left whenever we last shot. So if I want to, if I want to get it to shoot uh, f5, 5.6, for whatever reason, which is kind of in the middle. Uh, there's, a, there's a concept called depth of field. How, how much is in focus? I focus on a plane, a flat plane. How much is in focus behind that plane and in front of that plane is what's called the depth of field. That can be manipulated several ways, but the, the usual way is by f-stop. The smaller the opening, and this is where it gets a little confusing, the smaller the opening, the bigger the f number. I'm not sure why they ever came up with that, but it was probably 200 years ago. So uh, F8 is kind of small. F16, F32 are very small. And they, it's just like when you're on the beach, you can see, you can read better and stuff. You get more depth of field. Everything is in focus. If I'm shooting the Super Bowl, I can't keep up with Tom Brady's arm when he throws that football. I don't work for NFL films. I want to make sure it doesn't go out of focus if I get in tight on it. So I want the camera to shoot F11, F16. I want to correct exposure, so I'm going to have to adjust these other two items. If I want to do an interview where I want the background to be out of focus, but not the back of the person's head, I might go with like F2, F2.8, depending on how far away the background is. And I'll be looking at it visually, but I can say, hey, I want to shoot at F2.8. So I set it at F2.8, it looks really dark or it looks really light. Well, I have to adjust something else. And that's going to be the ISO because We'll talk about shutter speed in a minute, but let's just say we don't want to move it. We generally don't want to be using the shutter speed to affect the exposure triangle when shooting video. I'll explain why in a minute. That means we're going to, uh, go ahead. The, the F, the, is it on top of here? The, what is now it? it's inside. I'll show you how to manipulate it in a minute. I'll show okay. you. I'll show you how to manipulate them in. I just want to explain to you the relationship between them here. We're going to assume we have a correct exposure. And all the F you might, you all might have different F stops. It's going to be kind of wherever it was left, as far as I know. Um, we're going to move the ISO and the F stop here in just a minute. So hold on just a minute. So ISO is what is that? That is um, electronically. How do I? how do I change the speed of the camera that how fast it accepts light? If I'm on the beach, I want it to accept light slowly. If I'm on seventh Avenue after dark, I want it to accept light quick so I can get more light into the image sensor. Okay. So I can manipulate that. I don't want to manipulate the shutter speed. Night, night one. Did you have a question? Uh, yes, actually, I wanted to know, I wanted to just, double check the f-stop is to make sure that it uh is the adjustment of how fast 
the shutter speed will catch a moving a moving object, right? No, no, that's way off. I'm sorry. <laughs> now the f stuff. Yeah, so what, the yeah. f stuff is simply the iris. It's just a measurement of the iris, the opening of the iris in the lens. It doesn't really okay. have anything to do with shutter speed, other than when I they they are related in that if I have a correct exposure, if I move the f stop. I got to affect one of the other two things. You follow me? To get it back to a correct mm -hmm. exposure. They, they are related, but they don't, not in the way you just said. They're, they're all, in, okay. they do independent functions. And frankly, shutter okay. speed is worthless in my opinion for video. I, only on weird slow-mo speeds does it really matter. So the ISO is just a number that you see over here on the right. Mine's at 800 now. Okay, in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to adjust all this. That's, that's like in the middle, that's not accepting light fast, it's not accepting light slow. Um, in a room where a lot of lights are on, that's usually where I end up. But that doesn't really affect anything about the picture, except if I go way up high on certain cameras, including the ones you have. Way up high where you're telling it to accept light really, really fast is great for still pictures, but it can leave artifacts and noise in video. So if I, uh, you know, if there's, um, you know, a cop, I don't know, doing something untoward and I want to get it on my camera, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm not going to worry about those artifacts. If it's a spot news thing and I got to have it and it's really, really dark. But if I'm on a $10,000 production, I don't want artifacts. So I'm going to change my ISO. Okay. What was the number for the ISO you said? No, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter right now. Okay. Gonna, you're you're going to get a correct exposure for something in your room right now. So I'm going to show you how to set it, you know, and we'll, we'll leave it at 800, but I'll show you in a minute. Let me just finish explaining this uh, relationship here because this one's important and there is a button that's easily bumped on a camera. So the shutter speed, I want to keep it at a 50th, a 60th, a 40th, or a 30th of a second. That's what shutter speed is. How fast or slow does the shutter open? But with video, it's confusing. It really doesn't matter, but it can, if I get it too high, if it's, if it, and people love that. They think, oh, a thousandth of a second, slow-mo, blah, blah, blah. That, it's completely incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, what, you're, what you're thinking of in slow-mo is the frame rate. Instead of 24 frames a second, people like to shoot 60, 120, or even more frames a second. A lot of frames a second, if I slow them down in real time, it looks really sharp. So that's all that is. But if I have a shutter speed that's going through real fast, yes, it will help with slow-mo, not in the same way. But if I play it normally, it looks real choppy and it's almost unusable. So you got to be careful about that because you're going to be doing most stuff in real time. If you do any slow-mo at all, if you plan a lot of slow-mo, we can talk about it. But we don't want you to use the, sh the shutter speed. That's not what we want. So we want you to leave it. Now, you'll see it on the camera expressed just as a number, 40, a 40th. It, it is 1 40th of a second that the shutter is open. And, and just to further confuse you here, just to let you know, photography wise, the best uh, shutter speed is this fraction, one over twice your resolution, okay? So if I'm shooting 24 frames a second, this is where they are related, 24 frames a second, the best shutter speed for me is a 48th. Well, there is no 48th, but it's, so, it's not that important. So a 40th, a 50th, a 60th, a 30th are going to be okay. They're going to be okay. The other one, lower than a 30th, is also for special effect. You might see sometimes when people seem to be standing still and everybody's kind of a blur behind them. That's often done with a super slow, slow uh, shutter speed. Uh, like I say, the fast shutter speeds can be used for slow-mo, but the first thing people do is go to a higher frame rate. So how do I manipulate all that? Okay, so now we'll get into, because I know I've been talking a lot and you haven't been able to mess with the camera. Um, your cameras are great because they have little push buttons, okay? But you can also, there are buttons on the side that you can access. I'm gonna leave you to play with that, okay? But if I, if I wanna change my f-stop, okay, watch what happens. Can y'all see my camera here? I just touched the f-stop and I can slide it, okay? But the f-stop button, as I recall, yeah, is also the big wheel here on the right. The big um, wheel here on the right. Eric. And as I go down here, F11, F16, F22, see how dark it is in the viewfinder? 
That's because I'm making the opening really small and I haven't affected anything else. So you can do these a number of ways. Let me go to F8 and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So let me now simply- I think somebody had a question. Did somebody say okay, Aaron? Let me finish it. Yeah. Let me move, that, let me move the ISO up a little bit, okay? And you can see how it's affecting it. If I make it down, it's gonna make it real dark. Okay, so what's the question? I'm sorry. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen so we can see? Oh, much better good Lord. Bigger? That's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> Let me back up. Yeah, if I'm doing that stupid stuff, I'm sorry. Just speak up. Don't, don't wait to be. I know you're polite. But... I, I, have I have a question too. Um, our, our camera is like timing out really quickly. Uh, is there a way to change that setting to where it doesn't? Um, yeah, but I'd rather move on. Just just push the button. Okay. It'll come that's right what I've been doing. I just didn't know if there was just a yeah, better way. That's annoying. Get with me um, when we're done here. Okay. I think you have the brand new one. I never set that. It might be a few things like that. That one's never been used before. Is that brand new? I don't think uh, Just, yeah, just push this button up here. And we're going to talk about that because that, that you can use for a lot of things. Okay, so I'm sorry. To, so to affect these things, I can touch them here. Here's my f-stop. I need it to be much more open because it's really dark right now. I can go to 2.8, okay? I can touch my ISO and I'm up. You see how it's getting brighter? I'm telling it to accept light faster. I don't want to go over 1600 with this camera. Well, this camera is all right. Look at how high you can go. See how bright? But really, you want to keep lower, uh, like 32 with this camera. 16 for you if you can get away with it. Okay? Now, how do I know what's an exact exposure? Well, let me just show you one more thing here. There are touch buttons, but there are also this wheel. Can you see my wheel right around the word set? Yours might, I think, are, is the same. I have a different camera than mine. That is the f-stop. Somewhere there's a button for ISO. I, I just use those touch screens almost all the time. On the top up here, there's an ISO button. It's the same function. And you just slide it. A lot of this stuff is touchscreen, which is really nice. I'm going to come back down to 800, okay? Your shutter speed, okay? That's over here. 30th, 60th. I've got this one locked where it won't go above a 60th. I like that. I don't know if I can. I can't do that with y'all. But that is easily bumped here. By this this big button up on top up here. Wait, 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 this way. So be careful of that. I hate that. This one won't go above a 60th, so that's okay. And it won't go above 25th. So it's kind of in safe zone. But yours probably aren't set that way, so be careful. Kind of glance over there and make sure it's at a 40th or a 50th, a 30th or a 60th most of the time. You'll be all right, but it's easy to bump that, so just watch that. Because that could booger up your video make it look choppy. Does everybody kind of get how you manipulate those? Because now, how do I know what's right? Well, you can go with your eye, but these, sometimes your eye, everything looks great in these viewfinders. I'll tell you, especially with focus, but everything looks great in these viewfinders, okay? I can see though that this one's a little bright, but, but I'm gonna ask the camera, kind of ask the camera what it thinks, okay? If I go up here and I just halfway push the, the trigger button up on the top, just push it halfway down, it'll beep a little bit. And then I see this little scale under here. Well, when I line up the little hash mark under the scale with the big sort of home plate looking icon, that's what it thinks is a good exposure. Now it could be getting fooled. If I go down here out of those lights, it still likes it. So again, I push this. I see the little hash marks, those little numbers there, that means that's one stop negative, that means under, one stop underexposed, two stops underexposed, three stops underexposed. Good exposure, one stop overexposed, two stops overexposed, three stops overexposed. That's really a still photography thing. Still photographers like to take two pictures, three pictures of everything. 
one overexposed, one underexposed, one where the camera thinks it was right and they meld those together nowadays in Photoshop. Not really so much use for video. But what you do want to do is you can like go between what your eye thinks and what the camera thinks. The camera thinks it's perfect right there because they're lined up. See them? So get yours to, don't point it out a window because that will be confusing. Point it somewhere where the lighting is kind of flat in your room and just see uh, oh. stay with your ISO. Uh, don't go above 1600. You can go as low as you want. And then get a correct exposure. Again, the correct exposure is lining it up. And generally, I'm going to use the f-stop, but I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Got it? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Where do I get the camera from? I don't have a camera. Yeah, you're, you're just going to have to pay attention. because. Okay. I'm writing late. everything down. Juan, Juan, yes. I sent you a text and I sent an email. I said, you, have, you need to read your text. I said, for those of you who don't have a camera, you're going to have to pay extra attention and take notes. I and am I taking notes. Okay. Camera. I, you've had several texts and emails about this. So you should know that Nyquan is your partner just to get you up to speed but it's all in your text. Nyquan is your partner. Nyquan has the camera. Since Nyquan checked out the camera and has the camera, we can't do two people at the same time unless both partners agree that they'll do a socially distanced training together. Then okay. The person who doesn't have the camera will have to take notes and pay close attention. All right, thank you. Okay. So does everybody have a correct exposure? Do me a favor, hold the camera up there if you can. Hold it up to your computer camera. Let me see what you got. Your ears with, I gotta fix that way. That is a pain. Can you get it closer? If not, it's no big deal. I'm gonna have to trust y'all that you got it right. You can see mine, right? That button go. that little graph goes away unless you push it halfway down. By the way, if you push it all the way down, it'll take a still picture under some setups. Don't worry, that's fine. Don't let it throw you off. It'll, you can delete those later. Yeah, yours is, Moria, yours looks a little bit underexposed you're not you don't have the the two lined up it was lined up but when we changed the camera uh, yeah okay so adjust it Jeremy, to you can put adjust it in it. the in the in the so you can see it, it put your, not, not, uh, words of yeah. life and i that's cool but i don't know your name push your button down and let me see your uh, oh it's like words of life cool push your little let me yeah, you, this is a little hard to do. I'm going to have to trust you all that you got that. Yeah. You understand that concept? The number? Yeah. Because you see, just like these guys did, as soon as you move the camera, the light's different. So it's a different exposure. Yeah. Every time. I got to make sure. Now, when I'm working in a room with real flat lighting, yeah, it's going to be about the same. But if I zoom in, that means more light, it's gonna take more light to get through the lens, you know? All kind of things can, ex can affect the exposure. But you know, you now know how to adjust. If I have to open up my f-stop, you know, how do I do it? If I have to, I don't, I, and here's a key. I often, when I'm shooting especially interviews, I want it to give me a narrow depth of field. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, I won't forget to turn it back, I promise you. You see this interview? No. I haven't clicked yet. There we go. See this interview? Yes, sir. Look back here, see how out of focus it is? See how nicely that draws attention to her? That's not by accident, okay? I think I used this camera we shot this. It's not an accident. I purposely set it up so that the depth of field is narrow, okay? So how did I do that? 
um, I probably use like F2, okay? So let me show you, you know, you gotta force it to do that, right? So hold on a minute. So I know, you know, F2.0 might be a narrow depth of field. And I gotta look when I've got it set up. And if I'm on the beach, I might, it might, I might not be able to low, lower the ISO low enough. Sometimes that's why people will take neutral density filters and put screw them onto the lens. Um, you don't have those. I think you guys are almost all doing indoor stuff anyway. But if I'm doing an interview and I want the background to be out of focus, and nowadays you pretty much do, but I don't. I want to make sure she's not out of focus. I can go with f 2.8. Now, if I shoot f 2.8 here, oh, I'm one stop overexposed. See it? Okay, so I gotta slow down the light. So I just lower my ISO maybe to 400. Boom, I'm right back on target. That's the exposure triangle, but that's the exposure triangle with me just, not just accepting all three values, with me telling it, I want a 40th of a second at F2.8, what's the ISO under this lighting condition that I need? Happens to be 400. I know that if I don't go above 1600, ISO don't mean nothing except I can get the iris I want, you know what I mean? And again, so, I don't wanna move the shutter speed. So it's a whole lot of moving between the f-stop and the shutter speed. Now, I don't wanna overwhelm y'all, and when you're shooting your B-roll, um, I would just, I would worry about getting a correct exposure. Um, unless you wanna shoot a close-up of something and have them out of focus, then it's the, the thing, in the, you have the background out of focus, then it's the same principle as shooting an interview, okay? Same thing as that interview. Do we basically want to start with our f-stop and then adjust everything according to that? Yep. Okay. Especially when you're doing an interview. Okay. And, and this stuff, you know, the camera's not going to explode. This is advanced stuff. But if you look at everything nowadays, nobody, all these cameras can do this now. The video cameras, most of them, not the ones we have, but anything with ISO in it can do that. So everybody's doing it. Everybody's making the background go out of focus. So if you show people, you're trying to get a job and you show people interviews and say, I shot this with my DSLR and everything's in super sharp focus and I can't tell what the subject is, I'll know that you, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Basically that you probably could have lowered the ISO, opened up the iris and had the background go out of focus like everybody's doing nowadays. You know, <laughs> that's, that's just how it works. I mean, but you, you know, you, can, you always want to use depth of field to your advantage. But there are times when you're fine with everything being in focus. I'm shooting football. I want everything to be in focus. So I'm going to use the opposite of f2.8. I'm going to force it to shoot uh, f16. So if I do that, let's go with 11. It's a little dark in here. Now it's real dark. Okay, no problem. I just kick up the ISO. Now I can't go above 1600. And I'm still too soft underexposed. So guess what? Under those conditions, I got the best I can do is 5.6. Now I could cheat and go to a 30th of a second because that does accept, that does affect the exposure, but not by much. Okay. Now I got 6.3 at a 30th of a second and 1600. I can live with that. I'm going to go back to point. I can live with that. You see how it works? One thing affects the other. When I'm doing interviews especially, I often will want to force a certain f-stop. Generally a wide open f-stop and make sure I'm in focus on the face and then everything's gonna be nice and blurry in the background. It's called bokeh, Japanese word. You hear that a lot. Um, different cameras brag about how their bokeh looks. It looks funny when it, you know, when it goes out of focus. It's that important that they're looking at not just that it goes out of focus, what does it look like? What do the pixels look like when they're out of focus? That's how big, important it is, okay? So everybody's got that. You gotta, you gotta get your exposure right on every shot. And it's generally a matter of bouncing between f-stop and ISO. Doesn't matter too much what ISO you're using, it can matter what f-stop you're using. As long as you don't go too high on the ISO, it doesn't matter too much. Just don't go cranking it all the way up and saying, well, I don't wanna use lights. Because another way you can affect it is, you know, use some lighting and then you don't have to crank your ISO up because you're adding light or open a window or whatever it would be. Turn on the overhead lights. All right. Let's check my notes. 
I had a question about yeah, uh, what what the recommended f stop should be on the interview. Well, I mean, that's going to depend. You know, that there is no rule for that kind of thing. You got to kind of look at it and see what it looks like. And you can do this without your subject just by having your partner sit down in the chair. You know, we'll talk a little bit more here at the end about how to the, practically how to do interviews. But it would depend on the lighting in the room and, uh, you know, how far back the background is if you want it to go out of focus. The, you have to have a good exposure. You don't have to, you don't have to have the background out of focus. But it's one of those things you can probably control. The first thing is get the people out in the middle of the room. Don't put them up against a wall. And then generally F2, F2.8, F4 even. F1.8, don't, you don't have, your lenses don't go that wide open. In fact, your lenses may not open more than 3.5. I think you all have the zoom lens. I have what's called a, uh, a fixed focal length. Wide angle. Like there's no, there's no different. It's only a 28 millimeter wide, but mm -hmm. why would I want that? Well, because they can put a more wide open f stop. This has a 1.8. It's called, those are called fast lenses. It accepts light, it accepts light fast. 1.8. The problem with 1.8 is, boy, that's very narrow depth of field. I've seen people try to shoot interviews like that, and they, they, people's ears aren't in focus, just their nose. I mean, that's that's too narrow for me. I, I want the, I want the subject to be in focus i want the background so one way is i get i get the people way out in the middle of the room away from a wall and then i'll do maybe f4 you can do 3.5 with those cameras um but not when you've zoomed in it's a little confusing but when you zoom in you can only probably do 5.6 and that would be all right zooming in will also help it go out of focus you can look up bokeh and depth of field on a little bit on your own if you're interested because there's a lot there i, I mean i've been using that kind of stuff for 50 years, you know, that is a basic photography principle that, you know, depth of field and, and manipulating it. It's done in the movies all the time, you know, right. sometimes they want everything in focus, sometimes they don't. What do we got there? What do you, yeah, you show, yeah. So basically, the, the, when you mean like having the background blurred, is it like, because my Xbox is what's blurred and then the front of the, the front of the sticker Yes. Yeah, I see it there. It's hard to see. But yeah, that's right. That That's a narrow depth of field. That's all that is. Like, take the same shot with a dip with F-16, and you'll see how much more is in focus behind there. That's depth of field. Okay. Um, cool. You know, take a bunch of cups and set them up at an angle and put your camera there, and you'll see if you want to, there are dominoes or anything like that, playing cards, set them up. You really can see the effect. That, you know, if there's one big takeaway here photography-wise, I want you guys to understand depth of field. And not only that, but how can I make it work in this camera for video? Those other cameras, you know, they, they pick the exposure themselves, and there's very little way to control it. So this is a big advantage on these and a way to make the videos look nicer. All right. Anybody else have a question? All right. The next big one that you have to do every time is focus. There's not so many angles to this. It's just that you've got to get it right. These have a killer autofocus on them. I'm hoping they're all set the same way, and I believe they are. Basically, the way it's set now, if I touch the screen, okay, and then I hold down the button again, it'll beep and go green. That means whatever's in that button is in focus, and it will stay on it the way I have those cameras set up. I don't know if you can see mine, but it's tracking those headphones over there. When I, even when I pan, it's staying on that, the box, because it's saying that's what's in focus. It's that easy to focus these. Uh, point it at your partner if you got one there. Point it at a picture. It does face recognition with pictures. It, it should be set to face recognition. Can you see mine here? Hold on. There 
Now here's a picture. So now it's in focus and it stays in focus. See it? It's tracking it. That is super cool. Try that with your, if, you, if there's only one of you that have two people. Shoot her in focus, but focus on anything up close and it's a little easier. Obviously on a wide shot, pretty much any, you know, it'll focus in the center, but anything I touch. But one thing that's cool, let me see if I can show you. I can rack focus, okay? I can start here on the picture and say, I want you to, and record this, this is cool. I'm recording and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna rack over to the hat. And when I touch the hat, it should be moving. Well, it's not set right, apparently. Should be on continuous. There it's on the hat. Yeah, this one's not set that way. But you practice with yours, I believe they are set that way where you can do the rack. There's a, there's a, on the menu, there's a number of, and your menu is gonna be a little different than mine. There's a number of different folk autofocus methods. By the way, I forgot, you have to make sure your lens is on autofocus up here, AF. There is a stabilizer. People think that's so cool. Do not turn the stabilizer on, please. Turn that off. That is for still photography. We don't want the stabilizer. It looks like crap in video. But you want the autofocus on unless you want to manually focus, which is pretty hard with these guys. But any way you can, you got to get it into focus. So there's a lot, of, there's a whole yeah, bunch yeah, of yeah. AF autofocus different. It even tries to help you continue track to subject, ignore possible obstacles, versatile multi purpose settings. I, if I wanted to do rack focus, I would find out why that's not following my finger here. And like, it'll draw focus on my hand, but when I touch over there, it's, yeah, there it goes. Can you see that? This is cool. This is how you draw attention to something else in your shot. Change the focus. And to do that, I gotta have a low depth of field because I need the stuff to be out of focus until I want it to come into focus. That's a really cool thing about this camera. But the basic focus is just whatever you want it to focus on, touch it and then hold down the button. It turns green, you should hear it beep a little. Now my pillow's in focus. I'm gonna open my iris just a touch. There we go. 1600, F5, 40th of a second, pillow in focus, I'm good. Every shot, just like that. Then you can worry about what it is that you're shooting and how creative you're gonna be about angles and so forth. Okay? Everybody got the focus and the iris? Yes. You're not gonna show me out of focus overexposed shots, right? Now's the time, if you don't understand this, now's the time. And you know what else? When you're practicing. I'm gonna stress that to you at the end. I want you to practice. I don't want you to go out there in two weeks after going over this with me on Zoom here and think that you're gonna be able to turn on anything. It'll be mush, it'll be awful. Practice, don't go into these nice important shoots and say, oh, I don't know, this is the first time I've ever done it. That's, make it at least the second time, you know. Do, I want you to do a little story at home. I'll talk to you a little bit when we're done. All right. Those are really the key things, okay? Of course, the other one is how do I record, you know? So recording, everybody, there's a card in your cameras and there should be a spare card in the top part of your bag here. Right up here in this part on these bags, it's, they're custom made for photography. There's a little bunch of stuff there, little, little pockets for cards. There should be at least one extra. So there should be a card in your camera so it's ready to record, okay? So all I gotta do to record 
is push the start stop button. You see the little red light? If you can see it, but you should see it on yours. And it tells you how long you rolled for too, which is nice. All right, we're moving along here. If you're lost, now's the time. How's everyone feeling about this? Do you feel like, like Eric said, he's going to give you a little project and we're going to check it next week, right, Eric? Yeah. You see how everyone's video turned out? And you're going to shoot everything, I hope, what Eric has planned is that you'll shoot everything that basically you'll have to shoot for the promo video. Like, we want to see how you shoot a, a sound bite when you interview people, because some of you have like two or three interviews in your pieces, and how you're basically shooting the wide, medium, and tight. Yeah, we'll talk about some of that. We, we, we definitely want you to send me an interview with some B-roll, so, because that's want, basically we everything we do. <laughs> Almost everything we, we do, everything I've done my whole career, interviews and B-roll, interviews and B-roll. We, we need to yeah. see how you guys shoot the video and how competent you are before we send you out on these client projects because Eric will not be out there with you. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about just a couple other quick things and then we'll get into audio. A couple other video things. Picture style and color grading, okay? You can see my menu. I don't want you guys to mess around with what I'm showing you now, by the way. And I can't find it. Picture style, third page over on mine. Mine says neutral, okay? If you look at this, there's a lot of different pictures. I can just tell that I want whatever faithful is. I don't know what that, these are kind of looks. You don't want to mess around with that. It's pretty easy to put these looks on after the fact, uh, but a lot of this is for still photography. We put ours at neutral. If you look, it's all zeros there. That means, I'm going to add color and stuff and make it look really nice. I might want to do a dream sequence or something where I want it to look all, I don't know, desaturated and all sort of almost half black and white and half yellow or something. It's a lot easier to do that if I don't try to add things in the camera. Okay. So we set these at neutral. Technical color things are all sort of zero. There's nothing added because it's a lot easier to add that in post than it is to try to subtract it and say, oh, I didn't want it to look like a moonscape. How do I get that out of there? That won't work, you know? So we shoot in neutral. And frankly, I just want you guys to experience this because you might not need, you can run out and do these promos without all this, but I want you to, you're in advanced and I want you to get a sense of it. So you shoot everything in neutral and it will not look as nice as this interview I just showed you, you know? Um, it's just not going to until you get in the editing system. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And you you can apply it to a bunch of shots and stuff. It's not that hard, but something you want to get a, a sense of. And I want you to understand it, especially if you look at it like uh, when you look at the shot. Uh, when, when this was in the camera, it didn't look that nice. It didn't look like it jumped out at you. It looked kind of flat. We had to build it up a little bit, put some saturation in it and stuff. I'll show you how to do that. I just wanted to, you to be aware that it's there. If you look at your stuff and say, that doesn't look nice like Mr. Eric's stuff, it might. We might be able to make it look nice. Or if you want to do something, you want it to be black and white and stuff, we can do that. Okay, so that's what picture style and color grading, they work together. But what we don't want is for you to send out the stuff to come out of this camera right out here. I'm done. 
nope, it's got to be color graded. It looks too mushy. I don't want that going out there. That's, it's too mushy. It's not good. It doesn't look right. A professional looks at that and says, yeah, nobody color graded it. Nobody fixed it up. They shot it on neutral. Okay, crop factor. Bear with me here. This gets a little confusing, but for some of you that might be thinking about buying your own cameras and stuff, I need you to try to understand what crop factor is. It's a little bit, it has to do with optics and science. Uh, I could put this lens, a 28 millimeter. To me, I was taught still photography, 50 millimeter means a normal perspective. 28, pretty, pretty wide, 18 super wide, 75, maybe tighter and more telephoto, you know, 135, pretty tight, 200 millimeter, that's for football, really tight. That same lens looks different with video on different cameras. Um, this is what they call a full frame camera. So it uses the whole sensor to do video. It's gonna use the whole sensor for stills. It also uses the whole sensor for video. The cameras you guys have and the less expensive Canons and others, the Rebels, they don't use the whole, the whole uh, image sensor, the whole chip for video, uh, for whatever reason. I guess it just, for what, uh, whatever, it's the technical reason. So that means optically, it changes the look of this 28 millimeter lens to be a little bit tighter. Same lens, different cameras, different sensor essentially. That's all that is. And depending on the factor, and there's tables you can find on the internet, but it doesn't mean much to you guys because you guys, you weren't training what a lens means anyway. A 28 millimeter lens to you might mean, oh, that's a, a, you know, a telephoto, right? You don't, you don't know anyway. So you put it on the camera, oh, it looks kind of wide. I guess it's a wide angle lens. But when you see that crop factor come up or somebody says, you know, this is a crop factor camera, 1.5, that just means it's about a, a half tighter to me, you know, than what I'm used to. Um, I just wanted you to kind of understand what that meant. Okay, just checking in again, because we're going to jump from video to audio. Everybody good with audio? Or with video, rather, I'm sorry? Most important is that I don't want to go over 1600 on ISO, and I want to get the exposure right, manipulating the f-stop and the ISO, and I want to make sure things are in focus. Okay, so that's what you're going to practice with that. And you know, I'm whipping through this on Zoom. It's hard. It's hard enough when I got like four people in a room. So I, and I, what I do have is time. I've got some time. I mean, I got to teach a class this afternoon, but Thursday and Friday, I've got some time. So if you need me to go over this again with you individually or something, don't be And sure. we're recording it. We're yeah. recording we're it. Recording so you can it go back. I'll, I'll go it's over it with you. You know, I went over things with Kim um, on editing in the summer, over the fall that, you know, we did one-on-one -on -one and she, she picked it up pretty good. So, you know, I've got time to go one-on-one -on -one with y'all if you need to, but I can tell you that you, I can talk to you all day, but you just get the camera, you know, you don't have to buy film. <laughs> it's free. You have cards. You can just erase them. Shoot, 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 shoot. That's how to get better. Shoot all the time. Shoot everything. Shoot all the time. Make stories. I think, practice, I think practice, uh, practice. Nyquan is raising his hand still or no? Yeah, I got something blocking here. Hold on. What's up? Oh, no, you're not? Okay. Nyquan's not, maybe that was old. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know with my classes, like what I do, if there was like a bullet point index card cheat sheet of the main things, like I always say like 15 shots, wide, medium, and tight, all my little basic stuff that I put in for my field production. For this camera, what would you put on the cheat sheet note? Well, that I can you can you this little guide card. that I have here. Yeah, like the ISO, like when you said yeah. ISO 160, like you make sure you guys write that down and put in a little cheat sheet index card that you keep in your pocket so you can cross check. Because I know this is a lot, it's a lot of information for me. I'm just like, oh, you know, so you guys need to make like have an index card with a cheat sheet with some of these important things that could totally trip you up and mess you up once you get there. So the focus, I'll send you the little, I'll, I'll, I think I can share that right now, can I? I mean, uh... You can share I'd screen. Move on, but I can do it when we're done here. I send it to you and you can forward it to them. Okay. Um, here, Just email check. it to me and I'll email it. But yeah. one of the things is definitely that ISO needs to be at a certain number. Right? I can share just the, the video. Well, it does. Yes. It's not that important, but don't, you don't want to go over 1600. Did you write, write that down? Don't go over 1600 and check it. But you can go as low as you need to. 
And that's just for video. If you want to do stills, you're all right doing it. That's why it's there. You think, well, why is it there then? Well, it's for stills. Here's another example of using depth of field. I can read what's back there, and that, that is important in the case of what she's talking about here. We're going to talk more about how to frame it up. Notice how she's not right in the middle. But notice how, and this is outdoors. So even outdoors, we'd be using a different kind of camera, but it had the same lenses, probably the same lens one of y'all has. Uh, you know, it had ISO and it had f-stops. That's all I need to get her in focus and this out of focus. It excites me because the video cameras I used at Channel 8 for years, I just couldn't do it. I tried, tried. It just, there was no ISO. So whatever the exposure was, plus the neutral density filters, that's all I had to work with. And we would all try and we could never quite. Now you can do this on almost every shot. You could never get it outdoors. This would have all be in sharp focus. Now it's so easy. So that's, uh, you know, we try to do it all the time. And here's Dr. Clark, you know, in the plaza. The background's out of focus. Here is one where we wanted to show, you know, there's Dr. Clark. We want to show everything. We want everything to be in focus. So we don't have a, a, a narrow depth of field. And when you're wider, it's easier to get everything in focus. Okay, so let's jump over. Let's, let's talk about audio. <clears throat> these DSLRs, they're not the best for audio, okay? They're just not. You got to work around it, though. You know what they're best for? Price. I mean, if you guys are buying your own stuff, you're going to buy one of these or a mirrorless because they're, they're really reasonable as far as getting into a, a video camera. Uh, but what I'm about to show you, you can do it with your cell phone, whether you use your cell phone for the audio or the video portion, uh, the, what they call a double system, okay? You're going to shoot um, audio on one card in one machine and video on the other. And then we're going to put them together. But you, the key is you got to have audio in the camera too for a reference. So a um, the, the guys that don't have an audio recorder, let's just go over yours quick and everybody else pay attention. Was that, uh, that's Nikon, right? Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, so I have a, um, a Rode microphone. Would it connect to the camera that uh, Kim is using? Camera microphone. Yeah. Are you working with Kim? Yes. Yeah, but I don't want you guys to get confused, okay? I, I see a lot of that. People, those are cool, right? They look sexy. They're, they, they are not for interviews. I mean, I, this is, I don't know. I'm an old funny dunny. Everybody, I'm looking because we have, I have one here. Something like this, right? Yes. Exactly. It looks like I could get great audio from 25 feet. You know who has mics like that? The CIA. Nobody in broadcasting. Mics, I always say this, mics are not the same as, as zoom lenses. By the way, you guys have a zoom, so you can set up different shots by zooming physically. Do not record that zoom and think that that's going to work. I'm going to tell you to cut that out immediately. I don't want to see those rough zooms in your finished piece. I want you to see that you zoomed in and zoomed out and did different kind of focal length shots. But don't record the zoom because it looks so cool. It's really choppy. I don't even like ones that are, that are done with a servo, nice and smooth, unless it's for a real reason. But getting back to this mic and your question. <clears throat> these are all right. They're great for natural sound. Or if I'm absolutely in an emergency situation and I'm about two feet away from the subject, that's going to be okay. We don't want okay, we want optimal, okay? So this is for B-roll and to get good shots. There is a mic on all these cameras and that would be okay for B-roll. It's pretty crappy though. So I'll show you how to hook this up. You can and the answer your question, yes. As long as it's got this kind of an end and I know it does if it's road. Yeah, I have a, this okay. 3.5. The one I have is self powered though. The one you uh, have is, is I gave, camera better. So who has the... The problem with the 70D, okay, you have two 70s and a 90. They're almost the same camera, except they, they, there's no headphone jack uh, for the, the 70s. This is unacceptable to any professional videographer. I, it would be, it's like shooting video with your eyes closed. I mean, you can't, I can't record audio. I mean, I can look at something, and if I'm not recording it, then it's not being recorded. To me, that's, the same, I'm record, if I'm recording the audio without hearing it, 
I might as well have, you know, I might as well have be deaf. I can't hear what's being recorded. Unacceptable, unacceptable, except in an emergency or something. So Nikon, I think you have the camera that doesn't have an audio recorder, right? Yeah, right? So hold yours up, I, just to show everybody else. I gave you a cord with an adapter, okay? Because his camera, the 90 that we just bought, it does have a headphone uh, jack. So then all you need is to go from a professional, yeah, can you get the cable in the, in the connector that I gave you? And I'll get. Can you all see this? This is a professional connection here, three pins. See the three pin inside there? XLR, that's yeah. a professional connection. And then the female version of it here. Might be a little dark to see. It. See the three holes? That's what our professional video cameras take. And that's what, you know, professionals love that, okay? But what Nikon's holding up right there is just a little adapter to go from that to that little mini plug that you see on the road, and then you plug it into the side of the camera, okay? And that's all, and then you put the headphones in, into the headphone jack on the camera. And then you're in business. Now you only get to record one source, which on professional video cameras, other video cameras, there are two sources, okay? Which is nice, but that's okay, you can live with that. Um, so you just adapt it. Now the problem is you gotta keep those headphones on because it's very easily unplugged. These are not easy to unplug. I had a baby elephant get stuck in, all tangled up right before a live shot one time up at Bush Gardens. And I thought, well, it'll just break. It'll just break. It wouldn't break. He almost pulled the camera over. A baby elephant can't pull this apart. You breathe on this wrong and it'll pull out of there. And when will it pull out of there? At the exact moment when somebody's crying, I can't believe my son's in the Super Bowl. And you're like, great. And then you get back and it's, what happens is when it pulls out, it switches to the really crappy mic and you don't know it because you weren't listening. So now you're 10 feet away with a really crappy mic when you've got this beautiful lavalier mic pinned on them and you know, weren't recording it. What's the moral? Keep the headphones on. Learn what it sounds like to have really good audio. And then when you're like, it sounds like it's very a important. Barn, stop the shoot, stop the shoot, stop. Sorry Are you guys right. getting that? Are you guys getting that? That's very important. You've you have to make sure you got the audio. We get so much bad audio. I just don't want to, I don't want to. And this is, you guys are, this is the worst thing when you come back and Eric will eye roll and side eye you so bad. And I will be like, oh, be like, oh, you have all this great video. And like, there's no audio. It sounds like, well, you're like, well, there's audio. But it's like he's the secondary, the Nat Sound audio, and you're like, that's not acceptable. It's great for so, YouTube, and you make all the YouTube. Have your YouTube channel. You want a job with me? That's not. It's not going to get it. You're not going to get it. <laughs> We're going to say redo, go back. I'll you have like, to go back. Do you have a lavalier mic? Yes. I don't hear it. <laughs> you don't get the job. You know, it's like if you got the equipment, you got to use it. You know. So Check your you know, audio. again, I want to stress the. Everybody loves these mics. They do look sexy. I, they're, they're, and they do, they do have a pretty good sound. Now, I personally don't. There's better companies in Rode, but Rode again is inexpensive, and they made a lot of inroads in DSLR. And these are better, way better than the mic in the camera. But it isn't for interviews. So if you do use it for B-roll, please make sure it's plugged in and keep your headphones on because, although in the case of B-roll, if it unplugs and goes to the other mic, it's probably going to be okay. You can get to a point where you're not getting any audio and that's not going to be acceptable. Um, I think this is a good uh, time to also remind people there's, there's more than what there are more than what there's more than one person in your group. So the person who's not I, obviously you guys can't both handle this camera at the same time. So one of you is going to be handling the camera. It's the job of the other person to be the cross checker checker like you guys are gymnasts, you know, like you're somebody's getting flipping, you better check the other person's not going to fall. Okay, so you really have to be the, the spotter. You have to make sure like, I don't see that audio level or, or I'm not hearing it in the headphones. And don't worry about if you're interviewing, as long as you're not making the interviewee stand there for 20 minutes, it may feel like 20 minutes in your mind, but the extra 30 seconds to a minute that you take to double check that it's really recording and it's on the right microphone is going to save yourself so much headache down the road because i'm telling you if you don't 
listen to me, didn't listen to me before, I'm going to tell you again, if you, if you, you know, just went in one ear out the other, if the audio is bad and it's just that gnat sound, we're going to say you have to redo that audio. These are professional videos. Okay. So the, the second person cross check the other. Well, I don't care if the person the that you're interviewing is standing there for an extra 30 seconds a minute. Just say, hold on. We want to make, make sure everything's right. And you double check it. Well, actually, like you're on an airplane. When I was, a, I used to be a flight attendant in another life. And we would do the emergency bar. And the other flight attendant would have to be like, everything is locked in. And they cross check it before anybody takes off. So before you take off, you, you do it. And you have your partner cross check. So that's well, going to eliminate a lot of uh, a, a, a little mistakes because it's overwhelming out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, discount that. It is overwhelming, but you, you have two people with you. So use the second person. What I would do is for that now, because now we're going to switch to people that have this, the audio recorder. And so this is what's called a double system. I'm going to record the audio separately. It's very important though, that I get good audio on the camera for reasons of marrying it up. Uh, with the other file when we get into Premiere, when we get editing. So make sure you got audio. I'm going to show you how to do that here when we're done. But I want to, hold on, let me get a mic out of my other kit. I'm out of mics. Okay. Now you all have lavalier mics, I believe. I don't have one with me. Those are the mics that clip on. So I want you to ask people to kind of run it under their shirt and clip it on. But don't clip it upside down. There's little holes on the top of it. Well, the cap stand, that's where the mic is. Don't clip it upside down, okay? People do that. You don't, and also you're not Mr. Hollywood where you're gonna, I'm gonna hide that. I get that a lot. I, why does it sound so muffled? In this case, now this year, it's good maybe because they have a mask on, <laughs> but uh, in other years, it's because people want to be slick. Well, I hid it. I put it under that person's uh, clothing. Well, that you're not that good. And those mics aren't that small. I don't care if I see a little bitty mic head up here. I don't want it muffled. I don't want clothing scratching on it. I want it to be clear. So um, you, you want to run it up under someone's shirt, okay? And then bring it up here. And optimally, now this isn't super important, but optimally, if someone's interviewing me over here, on my left here. I want the mic here on this side, okay? Because I can take the little clip and flip it over. So you can practice with that. If someone's interviewing me over here, I want to clip it here. Uh, I, I don't want to clip it way down here. Again, these mics are not powerful. The, there are no zoom in a mic. You've got to get close. Now, you don't have to overthink it, but an inch or two is a lot better than a foot or two. And right here, I'm looking over here, they're interviewing me, the mic right here, an inch or two from my mouth. That's it, that's what we want, that's perfect, okay? So you have that lob, I have this hand mic, same difference. I'm gonna plug in the three plugs into my cable, okay? Everybody has their mic and cable. Nikon, you can do this on your camera too and make sure you got audio. In your case, you're not gonna do the audio recorder, but you can also be watching because you might get one of these. Now this one is brand new, just took it out of the package. So you'll have to stay with me if it's not quite set the way the other ones are. You other two ladies, you have your audio recorder too with you, right? These are cool. We use these for radio sometimes. I mean, they have their own mic. And if you don't have mics, you can just use them. They're pretty good mics and just put them down here below out of the shot. And it works great. Your phone, by the way, will work that way. It might cut off in the middle of it. It'll be a pain, but it's free. You already paid for the phone. You can do voice memo. You can, you can, uh, you know, buy a mic to plug into it. You can use that mic that's on your headphones. You, you can do a lot of things. You Google it, and you can get quality audio just by sticking a phone, not even the mic, just sticking a phone just off the camera shot. I've seen people do it, and then use the double system. Okay. So everybody have their audio recorder now. Yep. So you got the mic plugged in down here on the bottom. It doesn't look like there's no, there, there aren't any uh, three pin buttons like in a lot of things, but they will go in there. I think you want the, the, the solo pin on the top. 
plug it into the left side. You should hear it click, click. Try to pull it out. You will notice it doesn't come out. There's a little button to take it out. All right, you see that? Don't force it out. XLR is never forced. A baby elephant couldn't pull this out of here. You can't either. You'll just ruin everything. Push the button. Everybody got that? Yes. Now there's a big um, thing that keeps, it snagged me, it snagged our students. On the side, there's a button that says hold. That button's a pain because you think the thing is broke. If you slide it up, you, it just keeps any buttons from being activated and it keeps screwing everybody up. So that if you think it's broke, that's the first thing to check because they get slid a lot. Make sure that's off, down, back toward the input levels here. Okay, go to the button that says home and just hold it down for a second or two. I think you got batteries in there. And it should come on. So what I would do, by the way, if you have a two man crew, one person video, one person audio, the rest of it you work together on. But then it's like, I thought, otherwise it's like, I thought you were getting the audio. I thought you were getting the audio. Let's make sure we know who's getting the audio, okay? With these audio recorders. It's not gonna be that easy to do with the, the other camera. I mean, you can just have one person look at the viewfinder and worry about the exposure and focus and the other person be listening. They're gonna have to stand relatively close to you though. And in this day and age, I don't know if that's how you wanna do it. Somebody though has to be listening. Let's go ahead and plug our headphones in next before we even look at how to set this up. Remember that hold button. The headphones, you see them, they're up toward the top there. Okay. Better with me so far? So it's on, but you don't see any levels or anything. First thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm getting the right record mode because a lot of, it defaults to these, the mics that are here. And that's not what we want if we're going to plug this into the lavalier mic and, and do a nice have it there on the collar. So what I want to do is I want to go to this button up here and it might be rubbed off a little bit. We've used those hard. <laughs> they're, they're starting to rub off. On the, uh, on the right there, there's three buttons. One should say record mode. It might be rubbed off. See where my finger is? You hold that down and you're going to be in the menu. I want you to go to source. You can use the up and down arrows. And then you gotta play with this a little bit. You push the, the, but, the enter button and it goes to various sources. And then you do the up and down arrows, internal stereo, external in left and right, external independent. We want external in left and right. That way if I wanted to plug two mics in, I could. See it there? Okay, then you can hit that again. You still don't see any levels though. You do have, everybody have their mic plugged in? Okay, so this is key, pay close attention. The record button, I'm gonna hit it once. When I do, I start seeing my level there on my external mic, see it? One, two, three, check, check, check. Okay, but I'm not recording, it's flashing. It's just telling me this is a preview. Okay, so I listen to my headphones, check, 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 check. See what I'm doing? This is the key, check, check, check. I can, I'm pretty close to this other mic, so, and my headphones on this one don't sound that loud, so check, check, check. I just wanna make sure, I tap these little mics, I don't hear it. I know they're not on by mistake. The best way, I don't wanna bang it, but the best way to make sure I'm getting this mic, I can hear it in my left channel, which is the only thing I'm recording in this setup. Uh, the levels, okay? You want just a good level. The level adjustment is right there behind that hold button. Up for a little louder. And you can see, you don't wanna go above zero there. You, so you're all right, and you don't wanna be super low. So I'm bringing my level up a little bit. 
check, check, check. So my scale is maybe a little different than yours. And when it peaks, when it's gonna get distorted a little, because I'm talking really, see it flashing there to peak? Every time that flashes, it's a little bit distorted. So if it's locked up and flashing all the time, you're way over, you're way, you're way too loud. You gotta bring it down. Uh, but generally, let's put it this way. Audio is a lot more, the level of audio is a lot more tolerable uh, as long as you don't distort than say f-stops on video. You don't have the right f-stop. You're way off on the f-stop. We're not gonna be able to do anything. But if you're a little bit low, we can bring it up. If it's out of, if it's out of focus on video, can't fix that. If it's recorded too loud and distorted, can't fix that. Got to go back and reshoot. So make sure you're not distorting or super low. Okay. When you see that peak button come on, that's where it's hitting, going above zero. If it's doing that a lot, I would lower it. I would lower it. Okay. Once you get the level, okay. Just hit the button again. Now this is key, you gotta make sure. Now I'm recording. And how do I know? The numbers, can you see them? See the numbers going? Yeah. You gotta check that. Because it is easy to get confused on the preview. It's not flashing, it's just red. Meaning it's recording, okay? And then just hold down the stop button to stop it. If you hold it down like I just did too long, it'll turn the thing off and that's fine. The batteries are back here if you need more. I don't think I have any extra in there, but I thought I put fresh ones in everybody's. The card is in the side on this. It's only a two gig card. Why is that? Because audio doesn't have anywhere near as much data as video. Remember video is audio and video and it's like 24 JPEGs a second. They're not JPEGs, but plus audio. Audio is just the audio information, okay? Everybody with me so far? You gotta have your headphones in. I don't want you to just trust that level. You gotta make sure that you've got it right because you see that's not that easy. You gotta make sure you have external, left and right. Plug it into either one. You're gonna get one channel recording. We can put it on two channels later. For those right. of you who don't have the camera, LaDante and Juan, write that down. So you at least spot checker. <laughs> Remember, you can always look this stuff up on your phone too. Don't, don't be shut eye. When I don't, I'm in the field, oh, task cam, I can't remember. Okay, task cam, DR40X, on my phone, owner's manual, quick guide, anything. Oh, oh yeah, that home button. Oh, okay, that's how you turn it on. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of missed the beginning because I couldn't find you. What, what kind of cameras we using? So I can look it online if I don't. Air, um, you have a DSL, you have a Canon, uh, 90D. 90D, right? You have the 90D. 90D? Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you much. Okay, so that's how you record the audio. Now, you might think, oh, I got a time, I got to go, ready? Let's record together. One, two, three, record. No, we don't have to do that. You just have to, yeah, are we ready? You got audio's good, video's all set. Okay, we can record. You don't have to sync them up. We're going to sync the. The, the editing system is going to look at the wave files, literally the up and down graph of the audio. It's going to line them up, the one in the camera and the one you're recording here. And then it's going to turn off the one in the camera and make a whole new clip. That does mean you got to have audio in your camera though. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to show you that in a minute. Because for those of you that don't have a headphone jack, I do want you to at least confirm you have the audio, but it should be there by default, no matter what. Is everybody clear about that? Did everybody get record a little bit, a second or two? So they know how to make, make that work? So I don't know. We're, I'm lost a little bit, but it's partly because a lot of the buttons on here are uh, like rubbed off so I can read them. Yeah. So we don't have sound. So can you just, um, I don't know if we're in the right, you said external left and right. And I think ours just said external. Now it says something else. Tazcam? I don't know. So can you just go through how to put it on the right setting? Yeah, and yours might be a little different because this one's a newer model, but Sorry. I don't think it is. If I, uh, can you see me here? Yeah. If I go to over here on the right, if I hit that button, which is record mode, but it might be rubbed off. I want to go down to source. Okay. 
Okay, when I'm hitting that, it's not doing, it's not changing anything. I, I don't know if it's because I have it in, I did something else, but. The but three buttons on the right here. When you push the one on the right, what happens? Literally nothing. So you might have pushed that hold button on. Check that. Is it on? No, it's not. You got to turn it on. Yeah. Turn it on, you hold down the home button, lower left down here. Should still see a square there. That's the stop, that's the turn on and off. Okay, it's, it's on. Okay, now hit that record mode button. Yeah, it's just not bringing up the menu. It's not doing anything. Let me see. It. Get it real close. Can you, I can't. Perfect. Oh, you hold. Oh, stop. You still got it on. You still got it flashing. Let let pull your finger out of there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hit stop. Just like this turn on button. Or you're recording now. Yeah, you're not going to be able to change stuff while you're recording. It doesn't matter. Okay, but now our. What is it doing? No, you're unmuted. Okay. Um, your your, your so, record button looks to be lit up to me. That You're not going to be able to change anything. Okay, so it should be all the way. No, you want the, the button on the left. You, you keep turning it on and off. You're recording thing. Yeah. Right. You want to stop. You want to get out of that mode. Okay. See? All right. Now it's out. Okay, we're good. Now go to that button. Did it work? Yeah, yeah. it worked. Okay, it worked. Okay, so it says external in one half. Is that the, that's not what yeah, we want? Yeah, that's, it's a little different on this one. That okay. Works. Okay. Either of, the, either of those external ends is going to work. One's okay. going to just put it on both channels. One's going to put it on one. Doesn't really matter. We can okay. do it on both of them or editing. That's just so if you have two mics, you can record them independently. Now, now you have to push the button. You won't hear anything. Take it off a of record mode once you're in external source. Hit the record button once and you're previewing. Check, check, check. You're going to set your level. Over here on the right, up and down. Check, check, check. You can kind of guess until you get your subject. Then you just want to check. You don't want to see that peaking light going off all the time. Like if I yell into this really loud, I, it's just constantly going off. That's way distorted. That's going to be way too distorted. I got to back off. Nobody would talk like this into a mic, but I'm trying to demonstrate it. It's possible if you got a big mouth person, okay. like, well, some of you guys might be interviewing Rich. He's not a big mouth. He's just an excited guy, Richard Gunsmark. He talks kind of loud. So, you know, or Nerissa, if you interview her, she whispers, right? She doesn't talk loud at all. She yells, he's got that broadcast voice. So you have to kind of adjust. What did you say? I'm here. What? I'm just saying, I'm just talking about different people and how they talk. I'm saying, oh, you're making fun of my loud voice. You it's a cheerleader and yeah. an anchor mix. You have a real low voice. But no, yeah, the broadcast voice. So you're up there. So you just got to, it's not crucial. You just don't want to, you don't want to be too low. Or too low. You got to set that level. And that, as long as it's flashing, that's all you're doing. You're previewing. Once you hit that again, you check those numbers. If they're going, you're recording. All right. When, when we got it, just, it was blinking and we were previewing, but I still didn't have any auto, audio. I don't know what we're doing now. Okay. Did you plug your mic in? Yeah, it's in there. Okay, you got to use your cable, first of all. Let me see the bottom. Yeah. Do me a favor, unplug that. Don't plug the mic directly in like that. It's no big deal, but just, you got to use a cable. It can be a big deal. That's why. Okay. So you should have a cable. Watch, I didn't give you a cable, so I'm telling you to do something that's no, we've got one. <laughs> I know. I know. So the mic is going to go into that? This is that won't matter. You should have been hearing it anyway, but I'm just trying to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
that's why I did it. Definitely on those other cameras. Those Sonys don't plug those lavaliers directly in. We can't get them out. We have to take it all apart. All right. It clicks, okay? Now. We're good. Now, go back to your audio recorder. Mm -hmm. Okay, go through your steps, all right? Push your, if you push your preview button, you don't have a level at all, go over here. You may be just all the way turned down here on the input level, input you know, level. It's, it's like on like 17, so I mean, it's up and. Just use those up and down arrows here on the input level to get a decent level. Okay. The more you talk into the mic. Oh, testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear anyone? Nope. No know what? I'm... Nope. Go now. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So we have audio levels going, but I still can't hear anything through the headphones. Talk again. Testing, testing. Yeah, I noticed that on mine too. The headphones aren't the greatest on these. You don't hear it at all. Your level no. is low. You need to bring your level up. Those, those are a little confusing, testing. those graphs. Testing, testing, yeah. one, two, three. Yeah, there's nothing coming through the headphones. Do they have like make, a- Make sure they're plugged in tight. It's possible that those aren't making a good connection. I mean, they don't have a power on the actual headphones. Do they? I don't see any. No, there's not, but they do have this weird, I just noticed. I'm kind of out of headphones. I'm using all these. They have this weird. Uh, I have so head. Just... Make sure they're plugged in. You have this kind, the Bellinger kind, that these were like $5. Yeah, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a different set I have, but they're just. I was going to say, do you have your own headphones? I... Yeah, because I got a feeling these aren't working. I couldn't seem to hear it either. Here, I got a good pair of headphones right here. Let me check this out. I'm glad you told me that, though. <laughs> testing, testing. Yeah, it's our headphones. I okay. Well, then, unfortunately, you got those headphones. They're not going to be much good with these. Yeah. I hate those headphones. No wonder they were five dollars. <laughs> testing, testing. Oh, really check, 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 check. Yeah, I think I think there's a headphone level. Yeah. Um, yeah adjustment. Sense in the menu and I'm gonna to have to turn it up. And this one's brand new. I just got it out of the box. Cause I, I've got my good headphones on here at my home ones and I can't hear it either. But if you see that level, you're gonna be all right with this one, but you do want to listen. So you've got some headphones, make sure you take those along. Sorry about that. That's all right. So the rest of you all, Kim, are you hearing okay? Yeah. On your audio? You have an audio recorder, right? Yeah, I had it. So you don't, does anybody else have these kind that say uh, Behringer on them? Yeah, you got your own on too. These apparently, I don't think they're going to work with the headphone jack, which is bad. I'm not, Nyquan, do you have headphones that you can take on your shoe? Yeah, you've got some right there. Task him. Those are great. Take those along because I don't think these are going to, they, they have got this extra little screw thing on there and it blocks a lot. Can you see that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of connections. It blocks. I think that's your problem, right? Is that? Yeah, I think so. Too. It, right? I'm glad we worked that out before you got out there. <laughs> okay. So we want to just record and when we're done, we just hit stop. But you just want to make sure that's why I say if you got two people, I would put one of them on audio. You mic up while I'm lining up the shot. Test it, make sure it's good. Then we both record, you'll be all good. And that's just for interviews now. We don't need that for B-roll, okay? So let's get back to B-roll just a little bit, just to finish out the audio. I do like to have good 
quality sound in restaurants or wherever I'm at, if I'm recording chickens. So I can use this mic. LaDante, LaDante, right? Yeah, he's got one. It'll work on, on your on Kim's camera. I just, this one, I, I really don't like. It came with an, because it, it'll unplug at two ends. It'll unplug here and it has one. And it'll unplug at the camera. I hate it. It's a good mic when it's working though. You can slip that on. My camera's a little different than yours, but on the side. There's a place for a mic, and in my case, a place for headphones. Now remember, it might seem obvious, but that's not going to be what, you're not going to be listening to, let's see if these work in here. You're not going to be listening to what was recorded on the audio recorder if you plug in these headphones. Although I have seen people loop them into cameras, which you can do. Check, 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 check. Yeah, these aren't working with that either. But Nyquan, you and Juan are going to plug right in. You're going to plug your mic in and your headphones in, just like I showed you the other day. Okay. Yeah, I can't hear that either. Yeah, I guess I can. Well, I can't hear it because I don't have it plugged in. So I'm going to plug my mic in. Yeah, I don't hear that. Oh, I don't hear it because the camera's turned off. Hello. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm tapping on this, see it? Because I want to hear it. Do I get that? Very easy for it to come unplugged. The nice thing is if it comes unplugged, it kind of goes to the default mic. But sometimes it sticks right in the middle and then you get no mic. So be very careful. All of y'all should have a mic. If some of you don't have these black ones, you have another kind, that's got an on-off switch at the top. Make sure you put it in the middle, just the on-off. Don't mess with the one at the bottom. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I, I work at a, a flea market now that I thought of it. I work with this guy that sells electronics. I bought this mic. Is this any good? For like music and stuff? Let me see the bottom of it. Yeah, it appears to be. I, I can't tell. But yeah, it appears to be pretty decent. All right. We got to get back to this. All right. Thank you. All right. So... I can plug that mic in. Now, do y'all see that other mic in your pack that I'm talking about? That's your choice. But if you plug that in, I'm okay with you just using the mic in the camera, but I prefer you to use that. But just, you gotta make sure you turn it on. You gotta make sure you plug it in. And for those of you that don't have a headphone jack, or even if you're curious, everybody's camera, if I go into the, yours is a little different. On your cameras, when you go into the menu, there's two little hash marks that show a little movie camera. Those are, that's obviously indicating that these are video settings. And obviously audio is not gonna be part of, of still pictures. So you'll find your audio in there in those two hash marks. I see mine right here, sound recording. I can check it there, see, I can see it. I want it on auto. It's gonna set the levels. It's gonna to try to keep things from getting distorted, right? That's what I want. But so if you don't have headphone jacks and you just want to confirm, I'm tapping on that. See how it's going up and down? That's as good as I can get. Not good enough for me. I want to hear it, but I can't even hear that with headphones in it. I got to figure out what's going on there. Probably a setting for, I'll figure that out later. So you can go in the menu and see your audio there. And leave it on auto, though. Don't, don't. If you take it off of auto, then you're going to be responsible for setting the levels. You don't want to mess with that. Not on these. All right. How are we making out here? You guys following me? We're kind of through most of the technical buttons. Now it's more of how do we want to shoot things, okay? I showed you a little bit you know, how to make the background go out of focus. If you can't figure that out, don't kill yourself. That's not something that's we're gonna be required. What we want is good framing and good audio and, you know, no black flashes and stuff. 
But if you can make your guys are advanced, you should be able to figure out how to make that background go out of focus, especially if you practice. Okay. Um, what we want is we want you to frame up an interview kind of using rule of thirds. Okay, let me. So here's this little piece we did, got about a year ago now. And she's talking directly to the camera, okay? I just wanna be clear, cause sometimes I go through this and then everybody's got them off to the side no matter what. If somebody's talking directly to the camera, generally we're gonna have them in the middle, okay? But that's not how you're gonna be doing things, I don't believe, you're gonna be doing interviews, okay? So when we do interviews, again, we want people to be whatever side the person asking the question is. Okay, we want them to be looking that the way and to have what's called lead room. You see my cursor? I don't know if you can see my cursor, but mm -hmm. you can see the cursor? Yeah. See how much room is on this side as opposed to this side? I don't want her right up against this side, but I want more on this side, the direction she's looking toward than on this side. I don't want her right in the middle. I want her to be about a third of the way over, right? There's a composition rule called rule of thirds. If I take and make two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, the intersections are the, the rules of third. Wherever those intersections are generally is where you want to put a subject, especially an interview subject. So you just want to give them a little lead room. This, I would try to maybe come up a little higher. I, I, our tripods don't come up that high. You want to try to be eye level if you can. We don't want to um, look up people's noses. In this case, you know, I wanted to show the building. I needed to get the shot, so it's not super critical. Notice the mic. There's, I can still see the cord there, but she had it black. And, and during COVID, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to go up to people. I ask them to do it. See the mic here? It's got the little windscreen on it. You may or may not have that. That's good. That's fine. It's, it's on the other side that she's talking from, but it was still all right. The audio was fine. You see how the direction they're looking? And, you know, you can work to get a sign in the background, but don't kill yourself for that, okay? But if you're going to, don't make a weird composition in order to have a sign. Notice I can see most of his sign. Hey, cut off Ebor, I wasn't freaking out, you know? I'm going to put his name down here, so I got to make sure I am not super tight, okay? Uh, 60 minutes type tight, you know? I could be tighter than this. I could be up here, two buttons, we call it. That's generally what we do. Well, you can see, we, I have various... Generally, we, we, we do slightly two buttons or maybe a little bigger, but I don't sweat it too much. This one's a little- I like cold. that. Write that down. Two buttons. It should be a headshot, two buttons down the two chest. Two buttons is the place to start. Then, Remember like, oh, buttons. in this case, he's literally talking about these bricks. So they were important. So guess what? I'm going to open a little wider, you know? Here's the mic in this case, guys. This is a wireless mic that's just a mic. It's just right in his pocket. But you don't have to, you don't have to, like he said, and I'm going to just reiterate, you don't have to break your back to get that. If you just got Eric Rice in this shot, that that would that's the most important thing. Okay, you know because some, we'll some of you are going to obsess course. about what's in the background. Like, oh, I got to show the the people walking in the hotel. You don't have to show that, but some part of the hotel, like, and we can get specific about how these uh, sound bites are going to play through and framed up because you have one that's the that's going to be uh, Richard Gonsmart at Cafe Santo Stefano. Um, Hotel Haya, and then the bungalows. You don't need to find the sign that says Cafe Santo Stefano. You can just have him in a nice area of the cafe. Right, Eric? You don't, you don't have right. to have... That's right. I mean, you don't have people... I, I've seen people do the weirdest thing. Like, there might be a, sign, a neon sign up here that says cigars. They will get down on the floor and shoot right up somebody's nose just to get that sign in the background. Don't do that. Don't do that. In this case, it just worked out. Notice we let it go out of focus a little bit anyway. He's the center of attention. And we just did a normal shot here. You know, it's nice to have a nice background. She was literally talking about this building and how her grandparents were, her grandfather was a doctor in this building 100 years ago. You know, that's what she was talking about. So the building becomes a little more important than the obvious, than the usual one, like this lady, the background wasn't important at all, but we were talking about history and Ebor. I happen to love this building. 
I used to go to this club 25 years ago. I'm very sentimental about this building. I love it. So it's beautiful in pictures too. I love it. So I wanted her there, you know? So here, this, this, this is again, what, gonna, what we're talking about practice. Go over to that hotel without a camera and look around. Say, you know what? If I could interview the manager here, that would be great. Find a place where they can sit down or stand up and you're away from the wall, okay? You're away from the wall and then you can make the background go out of focus. He was standing in the middle of the Ebor room here. But, you know, I mean, the, the most important thing is the lead room here. Give it a little more in the direction they're looking. But also, I can't demonstrate this to you right now, but the person asking the questions need to stand relatively close to the camera. If they're standing way away from the camera, what happens is the guy, I'll go back here so you can see my head. What happens is instead of looking like this, just a little bit, they're looking way over here, answering the question over here. Then I'm interviewing the ear. We don't interview ears. We interview eyes, eyes. You need to see okay. two eyes. Yeah, not one, but even one, you know, even two is weird like this. The closer the person, if I'm the camera, I want Marisa standing here. She probably can remember like days when we're working after lunch, we're all sweating, and, but I'm still, after every question, I'm pulling her closer to me. She's trying to get away from me and my sweaty self. I keep, after every question, I keep pulling her back toward me because the guy's getting more and more profile after every question, you know? And she knows, she's just like, as she's asking the question, she's just taking a step closer to me in the camera to keep two the guy's buttons, face. Two buttons, too Keep the guy's face. Two buttons, face. Sir. Yeah. Two eyes. Sir. Right. Yeah. That was, that was back then, though, before all this COVID. So how does that work? Well, that's a good question. So if you're uncomfortable with that, I mean, well, you, how about can't, the distance you can't move the camera back. It's more or, of a question of not, not physically being close to the camera, but being on the plane that's just close to the camera, you know, not being way over here so that when the person looks at them, you don't have to be right close to the camera. The camera can be further back. Okay, it's okay. Where they, it's where their face is when they look at the questioner. Or you can if do it's way over you there. Guys, look at me. You guys look. Well, this is a trick that I would do when I if, when I was one man band, when I was a one man band way long ago, before I had the luxury of working with Eric. You put your hand, say, don't look at the camera, but look at like you're swearing in, like you're Joe Biden getting sworn in. Go, go Kamala Harris and say, just look at my hand. Uh, don't look at me. Don't look at the camera. Look at my hand. And then when you're recording, you can kind of go over there because it's sometimes it's, well, you'll have a second person in your crew. So, you know, like if you don't want to, you know, just say, just make sure you're looking at my hand if, and your job while you're looking at the video, well, you're, you have to watch it when it's rolling, make sure their eyes don't go all the way to the other person or start looking into the camera. Say so it's, and then don't feel bad if you say like, we need to stop and start again because I need you to be looking at my hand. I mean, don't be nasty to them like how we are sometimes like, don't do that, but just say, um, I, we have to do that question over again. Just make sure you're looking at my hand because I can't have you looking into the camera. Okay, so I think what some takeaways from this little section, two buttons, two eyes, okay? It's like this. You see how you, I'm st still over here, but you can still see two of my eyes. Now you can't see two of my eyes. This is what you should see in the screen. Like Eric said, two eyes doesn't have to be straight on like this. It can be like this. I can still see, you can still see two of my eyes, right? That's fine. But when you start getting like this and you only see one eye, that's bad. Two eyes, two buttons. Remember that. Two eyes, and it should be framed up like a zoom shot with the, you know, with the, the rule of thirds that he told you. So remember, it should so just remember it's a little this, like a zoom understand. shot, it's a like a zoom shot, like a head shot. Not check the headroom, square it up. Sorry. That's right. If you practice this, you'll get better at it. It's it, you really don't have to have the camera close to the person. They just have to be on that that plane. If this is the camera, they can be, you know, the camera can be back here and they can be here, but not over here. Because when they're over here, the person has to turn that way. It's really a matter of where they're looking, you know. And that, I've done the hand thing when I've interviewed people. It's a little distracting for people, so I didn't like to do it. But it, you know what's distracting for the home viewer? When they're looking right into the camera, that's really weird. So I always say it's not, we're not doing a high mom moment. Yeah. It's not high mom. They, you know, and Richard Gadsmar, he's done a million TV interviews. He's not going to look in the camera, but you go back and interview the cook. He might be nervous and look in the camera. Just say, you know what? Just look over there. Look at that pot over there or something, or look at my hand when look you're alone. When you're not, hand. have a person asking a question just off to the right. It could be six foot over, but you could also back up the camera so you're not close. 
And Maria and Athena, since you guys are already in Ebor, maybe you want to walk over and just do, you don't have to spend like a lot of time there, but like Eric said, just spot check. Take a walk over and see what Hotel Haya looks like and just go, oh, that would be a nice interview spot. You don't have to get so deep into it, but at least so you're familiar with it. Um, and then, like he said, you know, just do a, what do you call it? Like a site check, like scout, scouting, scout the area. Um, so a location scout. You want to look around, see, pick some shots out, be a photographer, be a videographer. You know, this isn't a news story. You, you know about it weeks ahead. I went in there as soon as I heard it open because I thought my students might be able to do it. Uh, I didn't talk to nobody. I just looked around. It's beautiful. I can tell you it's real nice. I, I just liked it. I thought, hey, I bet we could do a uh, promo in here. And, you know, here we are. We're doing it. So I, I looked around. I thought, well, there's a shot. There's a shot. You know, that's, that's a good thing to do. So we're getting close to two o'clock. So is it is there a time? I know we've covered a lot. Can we start wrapping it up? Because you have a three o'clock, and I, I think that you need to take a mental break. Because I know yeah, these five but, these uh, five hour plus Zoom days aren't productive. So here's here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to do a quick little piece. Don't get hung up on what it's about. I want you to show me that you can deploy this camera and do the things we just talked about. So when we talked about wide, medium, and tight, try to remember that. Everything is five shots, three shots, seven shots, four shots, two shots. Nothing is just one shot. None of these things are, are rules. Some promos, they are each one beautiful shot because they're trying to show the location. But if I got a guy making cigars, he's going to do the same thing over and over. I'm going to break that down. A wide shot showing the hold, and there he is back there rolling. And then we get a little closer, medium, he's rolling. I go back here over his shoulder. I'm shooting the cigar down here on the table. And then he puts it in the rack. I get a shot of it coming into the rack. That's a sequence. You can often do that. Um, somebody puts an order up in the kitchen. Doesn't have to be the same order. You know, you just get somebody serving. You know, that's a little sequence. You think about it in terms of little movies, okay? Uh, again, that's something you get better at with practice. But if you find that you're not zooming in, uh, backing up, uh, moving around a lot because you want wide, medium, and tight, but you want the wide shot from here and the medium shot over here and the tight shot there. Um, I was always heavy, but I started getting really fat when I stopped shooting every day because you should, if you're doing it right, you should be getting a lot of exercise. You should be moving around, uh, getting different shots. You, know, you cannot move enough. I mean, that's, you just can't, when every, people get lazy, that's when the video looks bad. They just shoot everything without moving from the same tripod location. That looks goofy when you edit it. it. It doesn't look cool. What looks cool is a low angle shot, a shot from up above in the Columbia where they have, you can go up and see the whole restaurant. You better get up there and get that shot. I mean, you got to move. You got to move around. So I want you to do, if it's just around your house or at the park, you know, every day I walk my dog, scout, uh, a 45 second story about that. All I need is one sound bite that I can hear the audio and see the framing. And if you want to do two and like cover the second one with Scout and Joe walking through the park, I want to see wide, medium, and tight. I want to see it in focus. I want to see a good exposure. I want the, to the practice what we just talked the about. The whole point, the whole point in what he, this assignment he's given you is to make sure you know how to work that camera before we send you out. It's a dress rehearsal. This is a dress rehearsal to make sure that you retained everything, you get it, and you feel comfortable so you're not surprised when you go to your locations and we're not there. That's so, the minimum I want you to do is show me something. I want you to work out any editing problems you might have too. Not, we could work those out a little further down the line. I can show you how to marry those audios, how to color grade and all that. But if you have basic problems, like I can't figure out how to import export, um, you know, we can try to work that out. I want, if you can't figure that out and you just want to send me some raw clips, that'd be okay too. I want you to show me that you learned what we went over here today, okay? I want you to show me that. You don't have to send me a 20 minute interview. One question and just give yeah. me the 15 second answer. It doesn't have to make sense to me is what I'm saying. Editorial. Show us how you're gonna I'm worried it about up. the technology. Show yeah. us the two buttons, two eyes. Two buttons, two eyes. I'm Not gonna, a lot of yeah, headroom. Just, uh, real quick headroom. Just don't go too much headroom either. We get a lot of Not that. Like Wait, hold on real quick. Not like this. It should be like kind of like the zoom shot, but like this with the rule of thirds. Okay. Just remember the zoom. This is the zoom zoom framing. We're just doing basic. I know on TV you see a lot of different ways, but we're keeping everything crisp and clean. Notice the headroom here. There's not a whole lot above him, okay? I don't like a whole lot. 
and people get freaked out. Like if I somehow cut off a little bit of his hair, oh my God, you cut his hair off. Okay, that's not the end of the world. What I hate is like a whole ton of headroom. I that's, just hate that. That's, that's, yeah. This one I had to stretch. That's a little more headroom than I'd like, but I wanted to see the whole building. Cause again, she was talking about the whole building and I had him get this in there. So uh, that's about as far as most headroom as, as I like. And it, it often depends on how wide I am to be. You know, I'm a little wide. So I'm going to give her more headroom. She's also got a large forehead. I get I, all of that. I go okay. uh, just in this one. Notice it's a little tighter. So don't give me a whole ton of headroom. But do me a story. I don't know when you all are shooting. Um, I well, do not want you to go out there having not shot. The, practice all you want. Make sure your batteries are charged up and stuff before you go. Again, contact me if you got some issues. But send me a video. Send me a video. They, they're going to start, we're going to start scheduling these shoots as soon as you're done. I'm hoping when you give them the clear, like kind of like COVID clearance, <laughs> camera clearance. So you guys are in like camera quarantine right now until we, Eric feels like you guys well, are. That's okay. You can do that. You can go shoot. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I just, I want, I would prefer that to see what you did before you went. Yeah, you no, so definitely when we're going to have this meeting next week, Eric, and we should, or, or we should double check the video. You want to. How do you want to handle checking the video and giving a clearance? Do, do we want to come back? You want to come back in my class next week? And when I'm doing class, I'll split it up like this and we'll look at the video together and say they're good to go and they can schedule with the crew. Yeah, the only problem with that is I can't hear the audio real clear from that. So you just want them to send, why don't, okay, so you send your, air, send, this week, this is your assignment to do what Eric said. Shoot some video, maybe Moria and Athena while you're there now, it's fresh in your head. Do it in Ebor where you have all that background and just send him a couple shots, like do, do a little story and edit it and send it to him before next week's meeting. Cause by next week's meeting, I'm hoping to get a clearance that, okay, LaDante and Kim get it, Moria, Moria and Athena get it. We can schedule the, the video shoot. And then this is the week to, like he said, hammer out all those questions. What did you get stuck with when you were by yourself? Um, also, before I forget, um, I want to let everybody know that all of you guys, I got uh, HTC is offering Adobe Creative Cloud to all uh, students who sign up for it. So I got all of our students in our RTV and FIL program access to Adobe Creative Cloud that gives you Adobe Premiere only for the remainder of the semester. They're doing it semester by semester. So not only will it give you Creative Cloud, but a bunch of other stuff like After Effects and um, Photoshop and everything. So if you look, in, since you're registered for this class and my other classes, look in your email, your HCC email, and see if you got, you should have got an email from Adobe. And then it, you just use your HCC login. Use your HCC email to log in and sign up. But you, you guys have access and the license for Adobe Creative Cloud, which will give you Adobe Premiere Pro um, to use the remainder of the semester. So utilize that. Eric, are you cool with them editing these projects in Adobe Premiere? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's okay, what so do. then that should be the that should be the uh, the editing of choice because I think out of the ones we, we don't want to do this on these projects on iMovie and we're not doing Final Cut Pro at the lab. So um, Adobe Premiere should be your editing editing uh, system of choice. It's free for you this semester. Please check your HCC email for the link. Use your HCC login and information to get started and and do what you, you need down, to do. you got to download premiere pro out of the cloud you'll you'll ha it'll walk you through it but you'll have to you get this like loader kind of thing from creative cloud where you can pick what software you want to pick you want to pick premiere. we have a tutorial we have a tutorial eric did another tutorial on adobe premiere on hcc well, that's yeah, the creative cloud is different because that's like all the software you decide which one you want you have to load that one to your yeah. computer but you have so, access to all of it, which is cool. So you can load Photoshop, Adobe Premiere. So you guys want to load Adobe Premiere and then watch the Adobe Premiere tutorial. But yeah, watch that. And I can send you the video for that if you want. Just contact info me. Down the road. I sent it to two people today. I sent to Maura, right? Did you get it, Maura? Oh, yeah. I got it. I got your email. Did you get the email from HCC? Did you find it that says, uh, or from Adobe that I says, but I already had it. She's paying. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Some people are paying for it now. It's like, well. It, they're only doing it semester by semester, so you don't know when they're going to take it away. But for this semester, you're covered. So check it out, please. See if, if you don't have, that's what we're going to hopefully, you guys are going to edit these professional projects on. Uh, I'm going to show you how to, 
how to marry up that audio and how to color grade when we get the stuff shot. One more thing, remember, not a whole lot of panning and zooming and move. That's not what we do. Why? Not why? zooming in and out. We, if you want a nice steady pan, maybe one, maybe one, but make sure it's smooth and nice. Not and it makes sense. Like can zoom in and moving all over. No. Like, look at this room. Stop, pan, click. No pans that go on for twenty seconds. Yeah. Three five seconds. seconds five, nice. you know. five seconds max. Start on a statue, pan off and see the open room. Okay, you know, you can't zoom with these cameras. You can't, it doesn't look right. Um, I have a very quick question. Tilt up maybe a little bit, yeah. Um, I, I have Final Cut Pro, do you not want to seize it at all? No, it's a bit, if you know how to use it and you're gonna edit, that's fine. I, I'm good with either one. Talk to your I can partner help you if you get stuck on it. I have it here too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Talk, work that out with Kim too, because- Do you know I how to use it? You just have- <laughs> Do you know how to use it? Yeah, uh, I had Nick Williams and he, you know, he went in depth in Final Cut Pro. I've been okay. using that primarily, um, but I have also learned how to use Premiere as well. Yeah, they're very similar. Okay, so we're 159. Anything else, Eric? No, that's it.